I'm going to briefly go through the setup of ROM Collection Browser within XPMC today. This is the ACE theme and I'm also going to touch on how to get the videos for this as well. The videos play with the wide view here as well as the panel view that you saw just a second ago. Any other view does not have the videos. Confluence, the default theme, will not have this level of integration with ROM Collection Browser. So I'm going to touch on how to get that. I just love the setup, uh, that's why I wanted to kind of show in a real simplistic form how I got it this way, but it really all boils down to if your emulators launch your ROMs outside of this, it's going to be easy to set up. Now if you're having issues with your BIOS files, all of that stuff I'm not going to touch on, then this could be a little bit more painful than I'm showing here, but if you've already gotten all that ironed out, we're going to go on here. So what I'm doing now is I'm installing ROM Collection Browser. It's uh, in the default xpmc.org repo, which is fantastic. So add-ons or settings add-ons, and then we're going to go get add-ons, and then we're going to have to go to xpmc.org add-ons, and then we're going to go to program add-ons, and then we're going to go to ROM Collection Browser. Now this is all alphabetical order. So mine's going to be installed. Again, all this is already set up on my end. Uh, I'm going to provide as throw guidance as possibly can to help your ventures. You're going to install there. We're going to get to the settings in a different location. So go ahead and add your widget and Confluence, whatever you want to do. Um, or if you don't want to use Confluence, which I do recommend, just go to Appearance within your settings. And then we're going to go to Skin. I recommend Ace just wholeheartedly. Get more. Uh, find Ace. So my ROM Collection Browsers map to my main nav here so I have it open so obviously yours is going to be blank whenever you first go into ROM collection browser you're going to be taken into this wizard basically within the wizard you can put all the information we're about to walk through what I would do first I would just like BS that information up front the interface there is not inviting and then hop back into it later just make sure you get your console listed as you want it so once you have your console listed as you want it you want to hop back into ROM collection browser bring up your context menu here and you edit ROM collection. So you work through that widget and so or the wizard, all this is gonna be set up. I'm just gonna go through Game Boy Advance here. Actually, no, I'm gonna go through them a little more common. We're gonna go through GameCube here. There's only four main nav items. If I don't touch on something, it's all default. In fact, some of the stuff I touch on is default. What's important here to set that's not default, your ROM path. So the file structure is good to touch on at this point. You can see how my file structure ventures up to this point. So we have my kind of bulk drive here all my ROMs lie within this game floor. In fact, I have Steam Games Origin. It's just a catch-all. Uh, we'll go ahead and hop into main here. So you can see I specify, and you will as well through the wizard, your media artwork file. And I'll touch on that here in a second, why that's important. But here's my actual emulator file. And then my ROM file is just a file named ROM, or a folder named ROM within here. So that's how that is pointed out. You want to have your file extensions, uh, which we were looking at MAME, so my file extension would be .zip. These are all zip files. GameCube is this. The parameters as well as your file mask, which we're looking at, are the only really exclusives to each console. Uh, I'll provide a resource for that. You probably just want to reference those one by one. But all this other information you're not going to have to touch, at least for GameCube. This does, this happens automatically, automatically, I like that term. So you just select your emulator or the console that it maps to, you point it to your ROM folder and it scans that ROM folder. And as long as your file names don't suck ass, it's gonna find what's appropriate and it's gonna plug them in here. So for MAME, I told it this ROM folder and then I told it to put the artwork file here. And what that game there with the percent signs around it, that's just saying that these match the game name exactly and with MAME you can't change the names of those so that's why that is. The only um, not automatic part here is going to be your gameplay. So you will see with MAME I have gameplay here. You can literally, it's just like this, these lineups then you have your box art front but with gameplay again, so the, the emulator here is going to be named Dino.zip so if I hover over Dino, I could put two kittens fighting here. If I name it Dino dot whatever AVI, any sort of media shell, 
whenever I scroll over dinosaurs versus whatever the hell this old arcade game is, it's going to start playing that video. That doesn't happen automatically. You need a program called Emu Movies. We don't need one. You can get the videos however the hell you want. You can go on YouTube and download them. But this will scan it in a database driven fashion. And you can change these databases. I don't recommend doing so. So really all you need to do on import game data is one, hope that the database has grabbed all your right box fronts and all your all that other stuff. And trust me, I know a thousand ways where this can hit so many bugs. I know it. But uh, if it all goes perfectly according to plan, you're not going to have to touch any of this except for the gameplay videos. Under browse games, I wouldn't even mess with this. Uh, the autoplay videos, all that set to default. So launch games. You need to map your emulator. Emulator parameters. Again, I'll point to a comprehensive resource of the emulators I run, what those parameters are, because this can dra drastically affect how it runs. I always check use emulator in solo mode, but that's after I added videos. If you have videos, check this. If you don't have videos, do not check this. All that does is closes XPMC in the background. I want to touch on MAME real quick. So again, if I didn't specify something there, you don't need to touch it. The less you touch, the better. It's just going to work. It's really a fantastic program. So MAME, this is zero here. You're going to see 99 for all my other emulators. The reason for that, it's a good thing I have MAME open here. MAME has quite a few nuances. Uh, obviously, I mentioned that I can't change the names of the files, and you can. You know, again, it's, you got to ask yourself if some of this is the juice worth the squeeze, and if you feel it so. But I'm good with the file names being this. But what I can't do is uh, have all these BIOS files pull up as games, because then you're going to have a bunch of bogus games. And you have to have those BIOS files to, for it to work. You avoid those getting scanned for your collection by putting zero there. So on MAME, put zero. Under launch games for MAME, do not extract zip files, because MAME is going to be a zip file. If XBMC, if 7-zip, if WinRAR, anything extracts these zip files, your MAME game is no longer going to launch. Again, it's just going to be the same issue that if it doesn't launch outside of XPMC, it does not work. Once you get that going, you're going to have a setup just like this. So this gives the wide view. My favorite is going to be this, this panel view here. So you have your videos saved under gameplay. It's all just a bunch of references. So obviously I'll have it exclusive to uh, GameCube out here. Let me just go to all and scroll through. I mean, the bottom line is it works. I could launch something here. In fact, I will launch this uh, Genesis here. So there's the solo mode kicks off. So that's why if you don't have the gameplay videos, I probably wouldn't do the solo mode. And then, boom, I'm playing some cool spots.